Here I'm going to show you a way to start dealing with friction in a little more detail. We talked about how the direction of friction is always against whatever motion you're with, so your velocity at the time. But we're also going to now work out the magnitude of the friction. Between two surfaces, the friction, the magnitude of it, it's equal to some coefficient multiplied by the normal force. In the sense that if you squeeze it more together, things are going to rub a little harder. That's essentially what it is. Of course, you have your differentiation between your mu s and mu k, static or kinetic friction. In this case, we have a snowboarder that's going uphill, so we're using kinetic friction in this case. But the main focus here is that because the friction depends on the normal force, and they act in completely perpendicular direction. So that's where the x's and the y's tend to mix back together and we need to solve one equation first to get to the other. So it introduces a little bit of mathematical complexity, but once you do it a couple times, it's pretty procedural, let's say. On to the question itself. Let's start the question with a drawing. We have a very shallow five degree slope, which I'm gonna draw a little bigger. And there's my five degrees. And there is a snowboarder going up it at the time. So here's a snowboard, there's a snowboarder, and then maybe his scarf is running that way because to remind ourselves that he is, right now he's going uphill. That's important because we need to know the direction of velocity to tell us the direction of the friction, which is opposite of that. And they want us to find the acceleration. This of course employs our Newton's second law, which is sum of forces. It's equal to the mass times acceleration, both vector quantities, which we can break down into sum of forces x is equal to ax, and sum of forces y is equal to may. Now here, more than anything, it's critically important that we select our coordinate axis systems that corresponds to our acceleration, because we have to solve the one equation first before we get to the other. And the math is a lot simpler if you pick one of these acceleration to be zero. And to do that on a slopey kind of question, what you know is the snowboarder is not going to be accelerating up perpendicular to the slope. And he's not flying off into the air, and he's not running into the slope. So we know that if we set, say, positive y like away from the slope like that, ay will be zero. And to be perpendicular, ax has to run along the slope. And that's because he's originally going up. Let's say that side upwards is positive x. So now we can do our sum of forces. To do that, we need, of course, our free body diagram. Once again, we'll draw the snowboarder. Again, assuming everything acts as a point, we have force of gravity goes straight downwards. Doesn't matter if he's on the slope or whatever, gravity always pulls you straight down. But then we do have a slope and that slope is going to push perpendicular to itself. So there's your f normal. Any f normal is going to be perpendicular here. And as the geometry works out, if this is the 5 degree, this is going to be 5 degrees over here. And what else? He's only touching the surface. So other than the normal force, he's only got the um, friction force. That's all we got. And friction we know goes down the slope because the velocity is going up the slope to begin with. And before we can do sum of forces x and y, we have to decompose my fg into y and x components, because here we have x and y, but that's just gonna be cosine five degrees, fg sine five degrees. And these of course are all vectors, because they have directions. So let's sum up those forces. Sum of forces in the x is mAx, which we don't know yet, and which is what we're trying to find out. Then we need my friction, which goes downward, so we say negative friction, so what's left here is just the magnitude. So then minus, oh, and then we have fGx. It's also going in the negative x direction. We can expand these a little bit. We know that the friction is related to mu k, because the snowboarder is moving already, times fn. So that's negative mu k fn minus, and then fgx is fg sine 5, which is mg sine 5 degrees. 
but right now we don't know Fn, so we're kind of stuck here. So let's look at the other direction. Sum of forces y is equal to m a y, which because of the way we chose the coordinate axis, we know a y is zero. And then in terms of number of forces, we have two forces with Fn pushing in a positive y direction away from the slope. And then we have the y component of Fg, which pulls down. So we have mg cosine five degrees getting a little more space. So from here, we can tell already solving for Fn, putting it to one side, we get mg five degrees cosine. Now that we have that, we solve it back up here, we can find that max is equal to negative mu k, which we know times mg cosine five degrees minus mg sine five degrees. A couple of things to notice. First, there's m in each of these terms, so all the m's cancel out on both sides. Doesn't really matter how heavy the snowboarder is in these case. And that's also why we want to keep symbols around for as long as we can as well. So we can solve directly now for ax. Suppose we could even factor out the g, so let's do that. Mu k cosine 5 degrees plus because the negative got factored out, we only left with sine five degrees. But the numbers now, mu k as we're told was 0 0.1. Working this through in your calculator, we get this number as our answer. In terms of direction, best to say down the slope to be unambiguous because we weren't given which side is positive in the beginning of the question. And that's how you deal with, well, both slope and also friction.